Hey guys, so for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to prepare a file to 3D print. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take all these components and I'm going to build something uh, with them. And then afterwards, I'm going to kind of show you some tips and tricks to make sure that your file is properly formatted and kind of the things that you have to do geometrically to ensure that. And then I'll just give you a, a brief overview of uh, the export settings so that you understand how to export your file. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. You can see here, I've just started out with a base cube. I've been doing this a lot uh, in a lot of our tutorials. Now I'm going to start sort of adding these pieces to it and I'll subtract some from it and I'll, I'll sort of Boolean union some of them and we'll talk about some of the importance of that. Okay, so uh, here we go. So I'm going to start moving this guy and I'm just going to Kind of randomly place things where I think they might work well or might be kind of create kind of interesting um, compositions. I will say, you know, one of the advantages of using a 3D printer is you can do things that you wouldn't be able to do that easily out of paper. So, for example, something like this, where there's a spherical object inside of a cubicle object is a great thing to 3D print because this would be really, really hard to build um, with paper or through other means, but with a 3D printer, it's uh, as easy as anything else. Okay. So this first thing I'm actually want to subtract that that sphere from the cube. So like I've shown you before, I'm going to go to Boolean difference, select the cube, select the sphere. So there's my first intervention onto this object. Then I'm going to grab this other sphere and I'm going to actually just to keep things simple here I'm going to be always subtracting spheres from our uh, from our object and then I will be sort of adding the other elements onto it okay so it's again boolean difference this from this all right perfect moving along really nicely and then finally this one and I will uh, kind of make that one, put it over here on this other corner. And again, I'm panning and looking at this thing from multiple angles. But, you know, I'm not too worried about being super, super precise here. Okay. Okay, perfect. So those are all the carves that I'm going to make to this object. Uh, I've already actually identified a potential problem, so I'm going to explain it really quickly here and then maybe backtrack just a little bit. So do you see here, we, we've made actually a very, very thin element. Now, depending on the scale of your 3D print, that might be a portion that might not print, and that just has to do with the tolerance of your 3D printer, right? So we would want to sort of um, kind of uh, see what the minimum thickness there is uh, and assess that and then move forward. So in that case, to do that really quickly, I'm actually going to just type plane. And I'm going to draw a plane and I'm going to move that plane vertically to kind of where I think the thinnest portion of that piece is. And I'm going to grab that those two things and I'm going to intersect. Okay. So by creating that intersection, now I can see that there and I can go in and I can measure, okay? So getting 1 16th of an inch. Now this, this uh, uh, object actually is really big already. So we're looking at something that's one foot. So this is probably something that I wouldn't 3D print anyway. I would scale it down before doing that. So that's gonna be way too small, right? Usually the smallest member that a 3D printer can print is about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to go Control Z, Control Z. I'm going to go back a little bit to before I made this last intervention here, and I'm going to move this a little bit away to give myself a, a, a little bit more tolerance. So I'm going to go do, go ahead and do something closer to this. Okay, so that's a much much larger uh, chunk of material there and that should 
ensure that I don't have any problems, okay? So now I'm ready, Boolean difference. There we go, that's much, much better, okay? Now I can go back, grab this last piece, and do that last intersection, okay? So just an important thing to note there, as you're, as you're making, uh, make sure that you're always aware uh, of your sort of building tolerances, okay? All right, so there we go. So I've made all of my subtractions now, made sure that they actually are gonna print. These all look like they are thick enough to print, okay? That's great. And now I'm gonna start making some additions, right? So I'm just gonna quickly do these. I'm gonna put that this one here. I'm gonna put this one maybe on the opposite corner. Maybe this is gonna be something that's kind of standing on these funny legs, okay? And I'm gonna place this one here at the intersection, okay? Now, maybe I'll scale this because I don't want this thing intersecting here. So maybe I'll scale 1D this object. I'll make it a little bit smaller so that it doesn't quite fit. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. So let's say I'm, I'm satisfied with this uh, with this composition. I can go actually go ahead and if I look at it rendered, I can see what it would look like, right? As a single solid object. Strange little beast, but that works. Okay. All right. So we might say, okay, we're ready to 3D print. But I would I would advise you against that right now because really. Even though we place these objects next to each other, we didn't connect these solids to each other. Okay. And one of the really important things to make sure when you're 3D printing a file is that you want to make sure that you have you're printing only one continuous enclosed poly surface. Okay. And I'll explain that in a second. But basically, just to reiterate, right now we have multiple different enclosed objects okay now why do we have to print enclosed objects well that's because if i just take a cube and explode it just to show you and explain something but right the way that rhino builds these objects right they're just surfaces right so if i have a, a, a bunch a series of surfaces and they're not closed when i go to 3d print this object the 3d printer doesn't know what 3D print. And the reason for that is that actually, you know, this is a perfect geometry. And so any one of these surfaces does not have any thickness, right? And so because they have no thickness, basically there is no material in any anywhere here, right? For the 3D printer to print. Because it sees this this surface has no thickness, this one has no thickness, this one has no thickness, etc. Okay. So for that reason, we always have to be uh, 3D printing fully enclosed objects, okay? So there's the first important piece of information, okay? The second important thing of information is that 3D printers prefer to have only one continuous object. And it's kind of a very similar logic as to why we need fully enclosed objects. But the reason for that is when you put two objects side by side, and they can be either side by side like this one, in which case they are tangent along a, a face, right? Or when they're overlap like this, 3D printers and programming uh, devices can get confused as to what exactly is happening in that moment of intersection, okay? So for example, the 3D printer doesn't know what happens at this exact layer. Now, they've gotten a little bit better at this, and a lot of times you can get away with it, but really it's best practice to make sure that these things are actually uh, a, a single continuous object. So I've told you guys how to do this before and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again, but the best thing to do in this case, for example, is to do a Boolean union and select this and select this, press enter. And now you'll notice actually what's most important here is that if we were to go inside this object, Okay, I'm going to actually zoom in so you can see it, but if we were inside that object, you would see that this is hollow. 
right? There is no longer this piece here between the two, okay? And therefore, if we go look at this through a ghosted view, right? This piece here is no longer there. And therefore now we have one continuous volume on the interior. Okay, so same thing here. We want to make sure we, we get rid of this sort of intersected volume. And to do that, we can do the exact same thing that we did before. So again, I'm going to select these two, two Boolean unions. These are ready. And again, here, Boolean union, this to this. Okay, and you'll see now we have everything as a single object. Okay, perfect. Now, before you print, now this, this, this object is ready, but, but I'm just gonna show you one extra thing that you can do to ensure that your prints are ready for printing. And that is before you print, you can always double check to see if you have any open edges or any unclosed surfaces that need to be closed in order to uh, ensure a successful 3D print. Uh, the way to do that is you select your object and you're gonna type do border for duplicate border, okay? And if you get a, a null answer where it says no borders are duplicated, that means that that print, that object is fully enclosed and that print is ready to go, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and explode this and I'm gonna just delete one of these spaces, okay? So I deleted that space and I'm gonna join it all. Now, I'm gonna just assume that for whatever reason, you're looking at it this way and you didn't notice that this space was missing. And because the space is missing, right? We talked about this. There is nothing fully enclosed. There's no material that's fully enclosed. So, um, so this wouldn't print, right? So do border. And if you do a do border, in this case, see, it shows two duplicated borders. The really nice thing about duplicated borders is that it, automatically shows you where you have a problem. So that's a very useful tip for if you're having any problems with the, with the print or, or with an object that you don't know exactly where it's in, still open, you can just type that and then you'll get the information immediately, okay? In this case, I can actually now just grab this, type cap, and I will reproduce that surface, right? Cap that object. And now again, do a last check, no borders duplicated, this object is ready to print, okay? So now we're ready to print. Now, the, the way that uh, we would print this is we would go to File, Export Selected, and we would now choose here, and we would go down and we would choose either an OBJ, right? Or an STL. These are two different, um, file format that basically every 3D printer understands. So I tend to use uh, stereolithography, which is the oldest, uh, one of the oldest uh, data types. And it's one of the ones that really almost, there's almost guaranteed to not have any problem. Okay, so I would just name it one and I would save. Okay, and it's gonna ask me here my tolerance and you can play with this, but essentially, what, what the 3D printer has to do is to turn your perfect geometry from Rhino into a mesh surface that is made up of uh, buildable surfaces, okay? So this just tells it the degree of tolerance. Usually it's fine. If you're having problems with some, some specific curvature, you can increase this, okay? You, you can always preview it and it'll show you what that's gonna look like, okay? So you can see, for example, here, I add another zero here and preview it, it's much denser mesh and so therefore it'll be more accurate, okay? So you can go ahead now and click okay and leave it in binary and you can click okay and it will have export, okay? So that would be everything that you need to do. However, there's one important step that you need to think about before you export and that is the unit type. Now. For whatever reason, most 3D printers work in millimeters, okay? And if you remember, our units for this project so far have been in inches, okay? So to ensure that you, you, your model comes out at the right scale, 
the thing that you want to do is if you're you want to make sure that you export in inches so before you export you might want to go back change it to millimeters click OK and scale your model yes all right so it's going to look very very large but now it's because now it's just in millimeters so it's still uh, this is the equivalent of one foot right but now it's actually in millimeters okay that's very important to make sure that you can control the scale in this case i'm going to uh scale this whole thing because of one foot by one foot 3d print would be huge so in fact i'm just going to grab it and i'm going to type 0.25 so i'm scaling it by one quarter so now this object would be three inches by three inches right it's actually a little bit taller because that was this original cube was uh, one foot by one foot so it's going to be uh you know three inches by three inches and then a bit taller right uh so i can just quickly look at that and now i know here yeah it's about 76 millimeters so 7.6 centimeters that looks about right okay and then this last thing that i'm doing here is i'm putting it in the zero zero again just to make sure that when i open it in that 3d printing uh, program it shows up at the zero zero there okay so now really after doing that after ensuring that my units are correct is really when i would export it so i would go back again click export selected enter and now i'm ready to save this as my 3d file okay so it's saved now it changed it because now it's in millimeters uh we can preview this still looks equally dense it looks pretty nice now i hit okay and okay again and now that SDL file that I've saved on my de desktop is what is ready to 3D print. Okay, so there you go. 3D printing, getting that file ready. Hopefully that helps ensure you don't have any problems with your prints and good luck to you guys in the next one.